wisdom for dummies. Don't we, who, who here thinks they don't need it today? Boy, I'll tell you. I want to be a good person. And, and so do you. I know you do. You want to be a good person. And, and again, I just want to encourage you and affirm you. You're out in the right path. And you know how I know that? You're here today. You're here today. You want to be at church. You want to be with God's people. You want to be where the praying is going on. You want to be where the singing is going on. You want to be where we're studying the Lord's Bible, right? So you're on the right path. And I know there's stuff in our past we're ashamed of. I know there's still stuff going on that we haven't, don't have a grap, uh, grasp on yet, that, that God's still working on us. I know that. But brothers, sisters, we have a God of grace, and He is glad you're here today. And you know what? The rest of us are glad you're here too. We're all glad to be here together. Uh, I want to be a good husband. And men that are married... I know you want to be good husbands too, don't you? You want it. Women that are married, you want to be a good wife. Some of you gals that aren't married, you would like to be a good wife at some point. I want to be a good person. Isn't it easy to be a jerk? I want to be a good person, to be a blessing to those around me, to be an encouragement to those around me, to be able to lift up those around me, to, to draw people closer to Christ. Wouldn't that be the best thing? If my marriage, my life, the way I'm going about raising my kids, if all these things would help draw people to Jesus, wouldn't that be a good thing? The way we spend our money, the, the way we live our lives, the way we talk, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be wonderful if everything about us is drawing people to Jesus and not pushing them away? Because we want people to, to know the same good God. God is so good. We want everybody to know God's good, right? And we want everybody to <clears throat> to join us in heaven, that, that party in heaven, the more people there, the better the party. Sometimes when you're having your party in your living room and more people are showing up, that's not a better party. But that party in heaven, the more people that come, the better. I know you want to be a good person. You want to be a good worker. You want your boss to say, that's a fine worker. I can trust that person. I can depend upon that person. They're always there. They're always doing the right thing. If you own your own business, you want to be a good boss, right? You want to be a good Sunday school teacher, a good friend, a, a good neighbor, a good brother, a good sister. And we want other people to be good, too. We want a good church. We want good families. We want good friends, good neighbors, good, I, I, good ice cream. I don't know how that got in there. But we want good ice cream, right? <laughs> We, we had the ice cream truck go through our neighborhood this, it's been years since the ice cream, we heard it ringing, and Megumi came in like, ice cream truck is here, you know, like, let's go, I'll give you some money, no, no, that's okay, you know, but <laughs> she gave me, ice cream truck is here, so, so but you, you know, Meguchi and I go, they're a little bit shy sometimes, probably you haven't noticed that, so mom went out there, and she went to the ice cream truck and got some ice cream, and <laughs> It was just so fun to hear an ice cream truck again. I remember as kids hearing those things. That was fun. All the kids go running out. We want our spouses to be good. You want your pastor to be better than he is. You want them to be better than they are. And I get that. I want that too. You would not know how many times I prayed and I'm afraid, I, God, please let me finish the sentence. God, give Foundation Bible Church better pastors. And please, let that be me. And Dad, help us to be better pastors. Because uh, I think you guys deserve better than you have. Uh, but here's the deal. Uh, I'm Johnny on the spot. I'm the guy who's here this morning. And so it doesn't help me to sit around wishing I was a better pastor doesn't really help you guys at all Sunday morning coming in. Boy, you know I wish we had better pastors here. Because even if I'm the lousiest pastor around, if I'm up here presenting the word of God and you're here on a Sunday morning, what do you ought to do? You ought to have a heart prepared to receive the message of God. So I don't, you know, it goes both ways, Dwayne. I, <laughs> I don't get to pastor a perfect congregation. I don't. 
I don't get to pastor a perfect congregation. Every, every marriage isn't the way I want it to be. Every friendship isn't the way I want it to be. Everybody isn't serving or giving or whatever the way I want it to be. But dad and I, you know what? We get to pastor. We have the privilege of pastoring the church that God gave us. And I'm thankful for that. Thank you, God. I'm thankful for each one of you. And I think about you during the week, and, and I'm not thinking, oh, brother. I'm thinking, thank you, God. And, and if I don't see you for a little while, I'm happy to see you again. And, and praying when, you're, when you've got illnesses, praying for that. When you've got relationship trouble or marriage trouble, I'm praying for that. Because I want victory, and I want to see joy, and I want people rejoicing in Jesus, and I want to see us catch fire and go tell everybody about Jesus Christ. My wife, Yumi, and you guys already know this, does not get a perfect husband. I'm the only one that gets a perfect wife. <laughs> and Dwayne. And, and all you other men, you, got, you married up. I know it too. We all know it. Don't pretend otherwise. Uh, Yumi doesn't have a perfect husband, but she gets the one she's got. And none of us are perfect friends. None of us have perfect friends, none of us are perfect friends. But what are you going to do with what you've got? We think of stewardship with just money. Well, I have to spend my money wisely for the Lord. I, I can't go out and waste because I want to give to the Lord. I want to support this missionary or do that. We think of it just, but what about you know, our time? I need to designate time to give to the Lord in prayer and service. Well, what about my marriage? Yeah, I use this for the Lord. My language, yeah, this belongs to the Lord too. The thoughts of my heart, yeah, that belongs to the Lord. All of this, using stewardship of what we have, not what we wish we had, but what we have to use for the glory of the Lord. The other day, and I'm not going to call this a poem because it didn't work out the way I wanted to. The other day, I dreamed a dream of goodness. I wished I were a better man, free from all that holds me back. I wished I were a wiser man, full of knowledge and insight. I wished I were a patient man, a kind man, a caring, brave, and gentle man. Or perhaps I didn't. For if I had really wished these things, wouldn't my life have changed more by now? Perhaps I only wished that I wished. A melancholy daydream of what can never be. Wistfully musing on a goodness that doesn't cost me very much. I wish I were a good man. A man without regrets or shame. A man who always did and said the right things at the right times. A man who is always a blessing, a strength, and encouragement to everyone around him. But I'm not. There's only one person that's ever been all of those things. My Savior, Jesus Christ. And then several verses jump to mind. Romans 8, 1. And by the way, it was August 1st when I thought of this. There is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So yeah, I wish I were a better man. You know what? Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? There is no judgment left for you. None. God looks down from heaven. He has no judgment left because he poured all of his judgment out on the cross. And everybody who puts their faith in Jesus Christ is forgiven completely. And when God says completely, it's a done deal. And don't ever have pride and think, oh, my sin's so big, God can't forgive it. Trust me, God's big, you're little. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus has given us a way out of the burning building. It's through faith in him. So I'm not going to wallow in condemnation because I'm forgiven. I'm saved. Philippians 1.6 For I am confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you and in me will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. You know what that means? When you become a Christian, God starts working in your life and he ain't going to give up. He never gives up on his kids. God doesn't divorce his kids. God's not going to give up on you. You feel beaten. You feel broken. You feel like, oh, I messed up again. Why do I talk to people like that? Why do I do that? Why do I think like that? 
God is not giving up on you, sister. God is not giving up on you, brother. Be encouraged. <coughs> Listen, for I'm confident of this very thing, that he began a good work in you, will perfect it. It's going to be okay. All will be well, like we just sang in that song. Whether living or in dying, all will be well, because we know how the story ends. And that's what we're studying in Revelation, isn't it? How does this book end? How does the whole story end? How about this one? Galatians 6, 9. So, let's not get tired of doing what is good. Get tired sometimes? Boy, it's just hard to put up with some folks sometimes. It seems like you keep trying and they're not. How about struggling with yourself? What is wrong with me? Let's not grow tired of doing what's good. At the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. There are blessings out there that we won't receive unless we're cooperating with the Lord. There are blessings out there that we won't have if we just give up on our life. Now, he's not saying you're going to lose your salvation. He's not saying you won't go to heaven. He's saying you're missing blessings because you're not doing things God's way. Brothers and sisters, did you hear that? We miss blessings when we just surrender to our bitterness. We miss blessings when we just surrender to our ordinary attitude. We miss blessings when we say, I'm going to do things my way because that's the way I am. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift us up. A key verse from last week, Hebrews 11:6. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please him. See, faith is not just believing that God exists. Faith is believing that he's good, and following him is the right way to do things. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, for no one approaches for the one who approaches God must believe, A, that he exists, and B, the Bible says that he rewards those who eagerly seek him. Are you seeking for the Lord? You want the Lord in your life? He will bless you. He will bless you. So here's the deal. Wisdom, this is wisdom for dummies, right? Wisdom isn't found in complaining about the way things are. There is no wisdom there. Faith is is not always wishing that everything around us was different. That's not faith. That's a wish list. Wisdom is giving to God what we have to give, and faith is learning to trust God and believe His promises no matter what our situation is. 2 Corinthians 8.12 is talking about financial giving. So this verse is on finances, right? We're supposed to give. But, that, but I want to take this and apply it to just our general life. So don't think money, think our life, okay? Uh, the principle still applies. And the Bible says, if the willingness to give is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Oh, I wish I could give more money, yeah? But God knows you don't have it. <laughs> the gift is acceptable according to what you have. God, here I am. For better or worse, can you use somebody like me? The gift is acceptable according to what you have, not according to what you don't have. God, here's my marriage. God, here's my family. God, this is my church for what it's worth. Little tiny church, right? The gift is acceptable for what we have, and what we have is this right here, and we're going to give it to God, amen? We're going to give this to God and say, what can you do with this? Lord, we're yours. I can't give him what I don't have. I wish I were a better person. I wish my relationships were perfect. I wish my church was better. It's pretty good. But here's the deal. I can't give God what I don't have, a perfect heart, a perfect marriage, a perfect church, but I can give him what I do have. Amen? Amen. And let's give him what we have. Here's my marriage, God. It's all yours. It's not about meeting my needs. It's not about me being satisfied. It's for your glory, God. Here's my church, Lord, as imperfect as it is. Here's my messed up life, God, with all the warts. Please take it. Make something beautiful of it. I want to be useful for the kingdom of God. Let's look at uh, 
Oops, I skipped a whole bunch. I was rocking and rolling. Okay, let's turn to Luke chapter 6 from verse 27. All right, from uh, Luke chapter 6, and it's a good thing to open up your Bibles, you know, something tangible. And, and I know, we, I'm not, I'm not going to say you can't have it on a, some sort of electronic device, uh, public display of affection, PDA, is that what they're called, uh, device. Uh, but you know what? When you're in a, a restaurant and you see somebody reading their Bible, isn't that wonderful and encourages you? But if they're just on their device, they may be are playing Candy Crush or something. You don't know, even if they're reading their Bible, there's something beautiful about having the Word of God in your hands and saying, Lord, this letter is from you, and oh, it's so good, and all this knowledge from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let's, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 6, uh, from verse 36. But to you who are listening, I say, remember, this is God in flesh. What message does he have for us? Love your enemies. That's why I said God's an alien last week. Love your enemies. Get over yourself. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what, does, what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those, to who, to, to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be paid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting anything back. Then your reward will be great. Well, that's a matter of faith, isn't it? God, love your enemies. No, let somebody slap me. No, 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 no. Okay. Not going to do it. And Jesus says, if you do it, your reward will be great. I have faith. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Wait a second. Maybe I don't have faith. Because I don't really think God's ways are better than mine. I think my ways are pretty good. Jesus Christ is trying to break through a lot of hard heads, isn't he? What did, what did, what did uh, C.S. Lewis say? Who likes the Beatitudes? Who likes the Sermon on the Mount? It's like being hit with a sledgehammer. Uh, J. Vernon McGee says, It felt like my skin was being flailed off. If you do these things, then... See, it's contingent. Some blessings God just gives out to everybody in the world. Some blessings he gives those who are, are reserved to be his people. And some blessings are contingent upon our response to the Lord. If you do these things, your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High because we need to be just like Jesus. And if you want to act, if you want to be like Jesus, you've got to act like Jesus. And Jesus loved his enemies. Jesus loved people who mistreated him. Uh, then you will be children of the Most High because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. And I'm awful glad that God is kind to the ungrateful. Am I the only one? Isn't it good that God's kind to ungrateful people? Oh, come off it. I'm not the only person here that's not always thankful enough, am I? Yeah. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told them this parable. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? Can the blind lead the blind? Guys, why do you follow? Why do we follow what the world has to say? You know, why do we get our cues from the sitcom? Why do we listen to the, to the fellows at work that their lives are a wreck? That's not where you go for wisdom. Ladies, why do we hang around with other gals who's, who are always moaning and complaining and now they've always got one trouble on top of another? 
That's not where you're going to find wisdom. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they both not both fall into a pit? Jesus is calling us out from the world. He's given us this radical alien way of thinking. He's telling us to be different. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? Now listen, the student's not above his teacher. And if your teacher is some sitcom on TV, or your, or your teacher is somebody whose life is pretty messed up, you're not above your teacher, but everyone who's fully trained will be like their teacher. You remember uh, Pastor Mike, the missionary, was here, was it last week? And he was saying, uh, Foundation Church, you guys are going to be, your teachers are Dan and Dave, and you guys are going to be like them. Jesus said, you'll be like your teacher. And I was sitting in the back, and I said, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, and some of you may be thinking, well, I'm never going to be like Dan. Well, you know, you're not going to be like me in this but guess what? Jesus said, you like your teacher. And if you're not, maybe that's because you're going here and saying, I'm never going to learn a thing. <laughs> In which case, we're, we're fighting with God, aren't we? You know, that's not where we want to be. So look at, look at verse 41 then. Brothers and sisters, let's, let's let these verses apply to us as we go. <clears throat> From verse 41. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye? And what I thought of for the first time was Jesus grew up as a carpenter. And so you guys are all thinking, why you didn't think of that before? I've always thought about that, but I never did. And so I was thinking, he knew about sawdust. Here you have God of the universe, come down human flesh, and ma, ma, I got something in my eye again, you know. And, and we always think about those people in the old days as if they're not really humans, but they're just like us. And so... So Jewish people 2,000 years ago, Romans 2,000 years ago, Greeks 2,000 years ago knew all about here. Let me get something for you. You've got to. That's the way it works. And, and Jesus says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? It's log. It's like whoosh. It, and, 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 and you go over, Michaela, let me get that whoosh. <laughs> it's, it's not, and Jesus is using an example. It's humorous, Right? But he says, you're all so busy. Oh, you got a little speck in your life. You got this little thing in your life. We're all running around trying to fix other people's eyes. And we're cracking their heads with this log. Jesus says it's a plank. You know, he's a carpenter. He's, Woo, I got this right in my own eye and I'm knocking into everybody because when we're being hypocritical, that's what we do. Now, you notice Jesus doesn't say, don't get that speck in your brother's eyes. It's a kind and good thing for us to help each other clean out our eyes, you know. But he says, you've got to be careful of that log. Brothers and sisters, let's not sit here and think, well, I hope sister so-and-so is listening today. Let's not be sitting here thinking, well, I hope this fella's listening today or that fella's listening today. Let this apply to ourselves. Lord, please search me. Please reveal to me, Lord, where do I got that plank? Do I, do I, what, do I have a log in my eye, Lord? Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to that plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, hey, bro, let me take the speck out of your eye. When you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So you notice Jesus doesn't say, don't try to help others. He's saying, be fully aware of your own sin first. Because we can't help other people when we're not aware of those planks we've got. We can't. When we're, when we're thinking how good and wonderful we are, all we're doing is bashing people in the head with our hypocrisy. Understand our sin. Understand our brokenness. Get, uh, work on that in our own lives. And then, guess what? You can be a blessing to other people. And you can help them. And you can work on that. Uh, general apology to anybody I've bashed in the head with a plank in my eye. Moving on. Uh, verse uh, 43. No good tree bears a bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick frigs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. Everybody knows that, right? You don't go to an apple tree and get strawberries. 
Everybody knows what Jesus is teaching here. But he's trying to say the fruit is what comes out of our life. And if there's a lot of nastiness coming out of our life, that's because the, the tree isn't good. A man, verse 45, a man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things. Now, sometimes we jump too, too theological here. Are we sinners? Yes, we're all sinners. The Bible says everything we do is tainted by sin. Even our righteousness is like filthy rags. There's no such thing as a good person. But the Bible uses the term good in several ways. One, we're thinking legally before God, nobody's good. But the other time the Bible is talking about what's the, uh, a good person is a saved person. In the Old Testament, a good person was a, a person after God's heart. And sometimes it's even an unsaved person. A good person is the person who desires good. They desire to be good. They desire to do good to others. And if your heart is continually wicked and dark, there is not going to be any good fruit out of that. And we don't want to try to force God's words here to say something they're not saying. He's teaching the people a very simple truth. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. And listen to this. Listen. For the mouth speaks of what the heart is full of. The mouth speaks of what the heart is full of. Wow. So what comes out of my mouth is kind of reflecting what's going on in my heart. Greed? Am I always talking about what I need to get? What I wish I had? Maybe upset that other people got it? <laughs> well, then my heart is greedy. Simple. How about lewd language? Now, the Bible, the Bible tells us that, that no uh, lewd language is supposed to come out of God's people. When it does, what does that mean about my heart? What about racist speech, brothers? And you know how I hate that. I hope nobody ever comes in here and feels unloved because of the color of the, their skin. Uh, there is no room for racism in the family of God. God made everybody. Everybody's beautiful. Everybody's made in their own image. Well, if I'm saying, listen, here's how we do it. Those people. People like that. Those people. Putting all a category of people, instead of judging each person individually, we put all people in one. We lump them all together. We dehumanize them. If we are using racist speech, there's racism in our hearts. How about anger? Am I always bent out of shape? Am I upset easily? Am I speaking about something that happened a week ago, a month ago, 25 years ago? Then I'm an angry person. Jesus says, for from the mouth comes what the heart is full of. Complaints? How about arrogance? Boastful. What does that say about us? A good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. These are, these are basic. This is wisdom for dummies. And then uh, this is also where the rubber meets the road. Because again, do I really believe what I say I believe? I believe in Jesus, but I'm not going to listen to him for my language. I believe in Jesus, but I'm not going to listen to him about racism. I believe in Jesus, but you know what? I've been holding on to this bitterness for so long, I don't even know what I would look like without it, so I'm not going to let God have it. God, I believe in, in you, but I'm so ticked off at my husband, I don't want to be a blessing to him. Well, that ain't faith, sister. That is not faith. God, I love you so much, but I can't stand this woman. Jesus said, I died for her. She's my daughter. You treat her like a princess. Brother, you do not have faith. I know about this because I'm right with you. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Are you anxious? Lord, I've got some bad fruit in my life. Either you're going to defend it, you're going to walk out here and ignore it. Please don't do that. Or you're going to say, God, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to have enough faith, God. I invite you into my life. Please work in my life. 
God, just because I was this way this morning doesn't want to mean I want to be that way this evening. Lord, just because I've been like this for the last few weeks doesn't mean that I want to get into a pattern where it goes a few months. Lord, maybe has been a few months or a few years. Lord God, here I am. I can't give you what I'm not. I can give you what I am. Lord, here I am, and please take me, mold me, use me. Lord, I trust you to work in my heart. Here I am. Lord, I trust you to work in my life, to work in my marriage. Cast all your anxiety on him. Yeah, we're anxious about these things. Yeah, I wish, I wish, I wish, but it's just not true. Cast it all on the Lord because God cares about you. It says right there in 1 Peter 5, 7. Anybody here know that God cares about them? God cares about you. He loves you. And we can trust him. Who else could you trust? If, if we can't trust God, who else are we going to trust? He died for us. Okay, more wisdom for dummies. And uh, that means all of us. Uh, Luke 6, 46, and we're just going to finish up the chapter today. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? You know what? One of the things that just gets under, gets me, gets me, it irritates me, is when people call me pastor. And they're not listening to a word I say, and they don't care to listen to a word I say. I always tell them, listen, I ain't your pastor. If, you know, a pastor is a shepherd. Shepherd leads the sheep. If you don't care where I'm going, if you don't want to go, then I'm technically not your pastor. You can say it, but, I, but I've had... You know, not people in our church, but atheists and Muslims say, Pastor Dan, Pastor Dan, I ain't your pastor. <laughs> I'm not. Jesus says, why in the world do you guys call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? It's all, it's all a game, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Jesus is my Lord. Love your enemies? No. <laughs> Bless those who curse you? No. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, when you don't do what I say. As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words, and now look at this. And again, we sometimes bring so much theology to the text, we miss what it's saying. And Jesus says, and puts them into practice. You don't just sit back and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just the way I am, nothing I can do about it, and I'll just sit around and tread water till someday I'm in heaven. Jesus says, now listen to what I say, now go put it into practice. This is wisdom for dummies. Go put it into practice. Our strength will come from the Lord, but we've got to cooperate from him in this. Uh, everyone who comes to me and hears my words, one, and puts them into practice, two. So it's not enough just to go to church and then go home and try to forget about it as fast as you can. Everybody know what conviction means? Conviction is when the Holy Spirit works on us. The Holy Spirit is talking to us about something. Like maybe when you're a little kid and, you, and your mom told you one cookie and you knew she didn't count them. So you get two cookies, and then something inside of you is telling you, that ain't right. I didn't do right to my mom. Mom trusted me. And I had two, well, I guess I had three cookies. Let's be honest with myself. And that's called conviction. God's working on us to get us. And when conviction comes into our life, you know what? It's uncomfortable. And sometimes we go to church, and we know it's beautiful. And we know God's there. And we know it's working, but we just can't wait to get out so we can think about our bills and think about lunch, so we can forget about what we just heard. Jesus says, hear it and then put it into practice. Me too, right? All of us together. We're all in this together. Uh, Jesus says, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts this into practice, not just saying, Lord, Lord, not just saying, I'm a Christian, you know, but I will show you what they are like. This is kind of cool. Can you, Jesus is talking to these people, God in flesh. He says, okay, the people hear my words and put in flesh, I'm going to tell you what they're like. I'm going to tell you what this kind of person is like. They are like a man building a house who digs down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but it would not shake it because it was well built. And the flood of life can be debt. Flood of life can be betrayal, disappointment. Flood of life can be... Uh, dreams that are broken or never fulfilled. Flood of life can be a divorce. Flood of life can, could be death of a loved one or you, know, you get that message from the doctor that you don't have much time left. Those are floods of life. And Jesus said, Jesus said at the end of this sermon, now listen to what I say and if you take it and you internalize it and you don't just forget about it and you put it into practice, 
You're going to build your life on solid rock. And when disaster comes, you will not be shaken. And I say, okay, I'm not there, but I sure want that. I want that, Jesus. Verse 49, but the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice, not just saying, check, I believe, right? But hearing the words of Christ and putting them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its collapse, its destruction was complete. Hard times come to everybody. There's nobody in this room that's not going to have hard times. But you know what? Some of us are going to collapse and some of us are going to stay after the flood waters go. It depends on whether we're building our life on that foundation. Wisdom for dummies. Uh, you know Foundation Bible Church? We got our name from passages. Well, there's several passages, but this is one of them. You, you wonder what kind of name is foundation. I've never heard that for a church. This, this is talking about building our life on this solid rock of Jesus Christ and his teaching, right? Mom, where's my life going to be? It's going to be on Jesus. Where am I going to base my family? It's going to be on Jesus. What kind of church are we going to have? This is going to be a church based on Jesus. We wouldn't have a church if it wasn't for that cross, right? We wouldn't have a church unless God called us all together. We're basing everything on Jesus. And where am I going to build my life and hopefully teach our children to build their lives? right on this solid foundation because the hard times are going to come, brother. Hard times are going to come, sister. Going to, the hard times are going to bash against our kids. Boy, we wish we could protect them from that, but we can't. But what we can do is train them to put their faith in Jesus Christ, to stand, and when you've done everything else, to remain standing. Where else would you build your life? You're going to build your life on money? Going to build your life on popularity? Going to build your life on your self-image? I've seen people try to build their life on cute. Everything is cute. I can't think deeply. It's cute. Come on, grow up. <laughs> That's no place to build your life. Build your life on, on violence. Build your life on anger. Build your life on alcohol. Build your life on having the best toys. Where else am I going to build my life other than Jesus Christ? So, brothers and sisters, uh, here we are this morning. I want to encourage you. You're doing the right thing. You're in the game. You're in the fight. And together, we're not going to build our life on the things that don't last. This is wisdom for dummies, and we all qualify. Jesus Christ, you've, he's given us this beautiful plan for our lives about being a blessing to others. I need to respond with, like he would, with grace, with love. I need to, Jesus says, watch what comes out of your heart. Watch how you talk, because that reflects what's in your heart. All these things here, Jesus says, put them into practice. A good tree is going to bring good fruit. This is how I want you to live your lives. And where else could we go anyways? Remember when Jesus Christ was talking and a whole bunch of people left him because he was talking the truth? And he was speaking the truth, and so a lot of people left. And he turned to his disciples and said, what, you guys are going to leave too? Remember that? He turned to his own disciples and said, you guys going to leave too? Because everybody was leaving Jesus. And they said, where would we go, Master? You have the words of eternal life. No other place, no other place to go, no other, no other place to build our life than on Jesus Christ, the solid rock. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that... Uh, you said the gift is acceptable according to what we have, not according to what we don't have. Lord, you've stirred up within us a desire to be good and holy. That desire comes from you, but you know we're not there yet, Lord. We're not going to wait to be perfect to serve you. Father, today, right here, right now, we give you what we have. Lord, please take us as we are. And then, Lord God, please, we thank you that you don't give up on your children, but you're going to keep working at us and chipping away at us and molding us and Father, I pray that when you look, you find us easily molded in your hands. You're like a master potter, and we trust you. Take our lives, Lord, and mold it into the way you want it to be. Lord, please guard our hearts, protect us. Help us to speak words that honor you. Help us to think thoughts that, that are pleasing to you, Lord. Help us to live our lives and help us to build a church, Lord, that you can use to draw more people to your son, Jesus Christ. Father, you died 
Your son Jesus Christ died on that cross so that all of us could be saved, have our sins paid for. Lord, we don't want that message to be a secret. Help us to take that message to everyone we can. Help us to live our lives that other people can know you. And Father, I pray that because we surrender our lives to you, we give, us, we give you not what we don't have, but what we have, Lord, that heaven, we ask, Lord, that heaven would be a more populated place. Please take us, Lord. Thank you for, thank you for always being there for us. In your name we pray, man. Thank you for watching. Foundation TV is a ministry of Foundation Bible Church, Janesville, Wisconsin. Find us online at foundationbiblechurch.com. Foundation Bible Church, inconveniently located two blocks northwest of the Janesville Athletic Club.